Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us this afternoon or evening, wherever you may be in the U.S. or around the world. And we have special guest Jim, Washboard Jim. You may know him as on uh, Stockwitz. That's his handle. Vegas was also going to join us, but we had a little bit of uh, technical difficulty there. So um, she will be in the chat if anyone has questions for her. And um, yeah, we'll get started. Quick disclaimer, just want to let everyone know anything that we're going to be going over is uh, really just highlighting the main functionality and kind of features of the platform. So we're not going to be going over any buys or sells or any signals to um, act on. These are all things to just show you how the platform works. So just a little bit about TrendSpider for those who have not heard about us before. Uh, we are a charting platform at the base, but on top of that, we are a really a new way to think about technical analysis. And we have features that uh, really cater to that through automation, through the ability to create visual interfaces without having to do any coding on the back end to create conditions such as moving averages, crossing to the upside or the downside, that type of thing. And um, over time, we plan to integrate the ability to make trades through these types of conditional alerts and things that you can create on your own. Uh, so we're really aiming to not replace your technical analysis, just make it more efficient and uh, easy to uh, follow. Uh, Jim, one thing that you can do, uh, the uh, next to actions, you can turn off the notification sounds because that may start making a lot of noises if everyone starts talking in the chat. Notification. Uh, so next to actions, there's that little bell. Yeah, got it. Beautiful. All righty. So some of the different problems that we're aiming to solve through our platform are a number of different things. So bias and curve fitting, um, hand-drawn inconsistencies, uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out, when you really shouldn't be trading. If you're getting FOMO, you probably should just sit on your hands. And so that's kind of what we're – we're really aiming to do is give you the ability to create these conditions and patterns and then, um, you know, really uh, have the system look for those areas for you and then make uh, make you alert when those conditions happen, not necessarily having to stare at the chart all day. Um, we're really looking to, you know, aim to you know, look at timing inefficiencies and missing key reversals because you can't stare at the chart all day. And there's a lot of different ways that, you know, we aim to do this and I'll be going over quite a few of those. Um, and, uh, you know, after about five, 10 charts, it's hard to stay consistent. It's hard to stay with a, um, you know, a plan as far as how you're going to draw your support, how you're going to draw resistance. And so what we aim to do is automate some of that process by still giving you some ideas to generate, but giving you some important lines to look at based on the criteria you have. We'll be going over all of this, and uh, I will hand it over to Jim here in a second. Um, some of the functionalities we'll be touching on for sure are uh, the cloud-based alerts, the multi-time frame analysis. I'll be going over really how you can look at these levels and draw horizontal levels. And uh, Jim will also be going over how he draws his horizontal levels and different trend lines too. Um, we are going to touch on the automated technical analysis. So I'll show you guys a couple examples of the automated trend lines and uh, how the raindrops work, which are something that is something very unique to TrendSpider. And uh, I will hand it off to you, Jim, and uh, let you introduce yourself for those that may have not uh, heard of you guys before. And, um, you know, uh, kind of show is uh, on uh, for you. All right. Well, I am, you got a picture of us on my screen here. I'm Washboard Jim. Most people call me Washboard Jim. You can call me Jim anyway, or Jim. But I've been trading with Vegas for about three years now, and her and I have got together and formed a website that has a bunch of tools on it and stuff. And we also have a chat room, and we try to teach beginner traders how to trade traders that have had problems in the past try to help them to become a better trader for the future and i'm a horizontal 
pattern trend line trader. I've been doing this for about 15 years. I know one of the first things I ever wanted to learn was how to be patient and then also how to find supports, pivot points, and resistances. And with Jake's platform, I'm able to do it. We do have a website. It's called ilovestocks.com, I-L-U-V-S-T-O-C-K-S. And we do have links on there where you can join the chat. Uh, you can share your screen if you have, uh, you know, any information too. Well, how do I do that? Just the actions, share, enable screen sharing. Oh, heck. There we go. There it is. I almost feel like I want to go through it again. <laughs> but this is our website right here. And we also have Twitter link on here. We have little icons there that you can hit and join us on our and follow us on Twitter. We also have our stock Twitch logos right here. Uh, Pinterest, Facebook, you know, you could always watch our YouTube channels. We do provide videos. We do one every Sunday and try to get them out on the weekdays. And we just kind of give updates on what we're watching. That's basically what it is. Vegas talks about the companies and the fundamentals. And I talk more or less about the uh, stocks themselves, about the charts. So let's get back to the, uh, go ahead. And I started using Jake's platform about, I'd say about six months ago. And I've been really starting to use it here lately. And I just want to show you different ways that I can draw trend lines and and how I just come up with supports and resistances and the moving averages. Like Jake said, you have a certain pattern you trade with and a certain technique and, and this platform's just perfect for you. So Jake, you want me to start off with a stock or you want to keep on going here? No, no, go for it. Yeah. Uh, in NBDA and then whatever you, ones you want to go over. Yeah. So usually when I'm looking at a chart, I like to pull up the yearly chart first. And so that's right here. We've got the daily and also you can look up on the platform. We've got the four hour. You can change it to a four hour platform. You can, I usually go with the, the, the daily and I study the daily first. This goes all the way back to a whole year, 52 weeks out of the year. And then we've got changes over here. And then I go to like, the um, four hour chart and I get a kind of a look about how the patterns are and try to start drawing support lines. Then I finally go down to the, about the one day, one minute, and that's how I day trade. I just kind of go with the one minute and I start drawing trend lines as I've done right here to find supports and resistances. So let's go up to the, to the daily right now. And I'm going to try to draw in some trend lines in here. So let's kind of bunch this up. I'm going to be looking for supports. And this is how I kind of started off. I'll go to the draw. I'll hit the horizontal line right here. Then I'll bring her on down and I'll start looking for connections. I usually use the base of the candles, not the wicks, because they have more power. They have more strength. So when I'm going down here and I'm drawing up charts on Trend Spider, I'm looking for places. And I'm, I've got my horizontal line, so I'm going to set me a support level right here. I see this low that we had right here. So I want to kind of line that up with other places that, that kind of line up together. And I see this gap right here. So I'm going to draw me a trend line right there. That's well, let me erase that. We can always go in here and erase these, remove horizontals drawing, and we'll go back over here and I'll, it's where you put your mouse, where you put your crosshair is where the trend line will start. So you always have to come back up here Get the horizontal line and then pull it back and try to find your little spot right here. Each one of these trend lines has the prices on them. And that's what I like about that because I don't get fogged up over here and I can see the price when I'm drawing these up. So I'm looking for another another support area, another resistance area. We are right now at 160, 181.50. So if this stock decided to pull back, I'm going to look for places of consolidation. And I see this little breakout we had right here and I'm going to start that with that wick of that candle right there on that base and I'm going to follow it up you see how it lines up right here and how it lines up right there 
So I've got confirmation and I've got some some support level right there. And I'm going to put that at right at 173.03. That's where my support level is going to be. I need to come back up here, hit the horizontal line. Then I'm going to draw that support line right there. So there's a support level. I think this thing can pull back. We had a big engulfing candle here on the daily. So now I'm going to try to draw. I'm going to go ahead and draw another trend line right here where the top of that base is and see if it follows through with some others up here. So I'm going to hit that horizontal line. And I'm going to look for some kind of resistance level that we can break up to. And I'm looking at the bases of the candles. Now, if they line up and meet with wicks, that's another confirmation that I'm right on ball here. So I'm going to put me a resistance level at 183.84. And that's going to be where my other resistance line is. And I see another one right here where they had this little height right here and it pulled back. So I'm going to draw a resistance line right there. I go up here to draw, hit the horizontal line. Then I'm going to go ahead and line that up with some wicks and some bases. And I've been doing this for a very long time. And let me tell you, I'm one of the best horizontal line. People are always asking me for supports and resistances and pivot points. And that's, that's one of the first things you really got to know. And plus, be able to identify patterns. You know, and I'll show you what I mean by patterns when I get to a different time frame. I know the high resistance is going to be right here. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to hit the horizontal line again. And I'm going to go ahead and put a resistance line right there. So it's going to have a hard, and when I say hard, hard resistance, that's mean where it's, where it's going to have to have a hard time of getting to break. And that's going to be like a triple top. We have one here, one here. And if this thing can shoot up and break past this resistance right here, there's another resistance right here on the base of that candle. So I'm going to do my final line right here, and I'm going to go hit horizontal, and I'm going to draw a little trend line right there. I'm going to bring it just a little bit shy, right about in there at 186.37. And by double-clicking that, you can change the colors of these trend lines. So if I was, for example, I wanted to find me a hard support area, I think it would be right in here because we had that peak right here. And I always try to, everybody trades different, but you can go in here and you can change that color of that just by pushing that and you're done. And that automatically turns into your red. So that's to me is going to be a hard support area or at least the first support. Then you got another one right down here. Now I'm going to change the time frame, and I'm going to go to a one hour. Now, these trend lines I've already drawn on here, so I'm going to fine-tune this like you do a fiddle. You know, you got your top part of the fiddle where you, 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 you tune the strings, and then down at the bottom, you got a little knobs down there where you really try to fine-tune it. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to look for support levels. Right now, we're at 181.34. You see where we stopped right here on these wicks up here? That, that looks to me like a, almost a pretty good little spot to draw a trend line. So I'm going to go in here and hit the horizontal line one more time. And then I'm going to draw me a trend line right about where that is right now at close. Because that's going to be, and then I want to change that color. I'm going to put that back to yellow. Then I'm going to hit done. I know that this red line is going to be a hard support. If it pulls back to 178.80, I might have an idea to get in the trade. But now I'm going to look in this little... Um, what I would call a blowhorn pattern. You see, we had higher highs, and we also had uh, lower lower lows. Now, in a pattern like this, they usually like to pull back, and then initially you'll get a breakout. So I think this could pull back to support level, and then initially come back up and start breaking resistance. I don't think we're going to come in here in the morning. And it's automatically going to shoot up. It's probably going to pull right back to this first support area. So I'm going to draw, find me a little pattern in here somewhere where I think the second support is going to be for right now. I'm going to go get my line here, and I'm going to look for the bases of the candles that line up the most. Remember I said the bases is where all the strength is. And I see some bases right in here occurring. I see a little bit of action here, and I see some action here. I see a wick that kind of touched right there. So I'm going to draw that trend line right in there and I'm going to call that 176.19 176.10 a support area 
Now I've got three different supports so far on this one hour uh, chart that goes all the way back to a month, a couple months, or at least a month. Now I'm going to fine tune it again, and I'm going to go up here to the one minute. Then when I go to the one minute, and I've got my moving averages on here. Right now I'm using the, the EMA 200, which is the orange one. I'm using the, the 34, which is the white one, and then the green one, the 9. I use the 9 as, as a support level, and then if they break down, I start using these other moving averages as supports. If that 9 starts to cross down over the 34, over the 200, that shows a sign of weakness. So I'm going to be patient and wait for it. So now I want to draw another trend line in this daily chart. This is a daily one-minute chart. And I see real, see we had a bottom right here. We had that little wick right there. Hold on to that. We have that base of that candle right there. And we have these other bases right here where it kind of broke out and consolidated. So I'm going to draw a trend line right there. That's going to be a support at 180.14, 180.15. You see, we did pull back there, but we do have another spot right in here that looks very delicious. And I'm going to go ahead and draw me a trend line right in there because that's where we kind of touched down a few times and consolidated, if that makes any sense to you. But people are always asking. One of the biggest problems with traders is they can't, they can't figure out where supports are, and they just kind of run with the trend. But it's always good to know where your next support level is going to be or your next resistance is. Then you have the possibility of getting out before it dips. I'm going to erase that line. This does have the capabilities of erasing. Remove the horizontal, remove this horizontal line. And I'll come back in here and try it again. I have to go up here and hit draw the horizontal. And then I'll draw me another trend line right there. It's at 180.33. So that thing can pull back. Now, we did have a high up here, see, on a daily one minute. So I'm going to draw another trend line right here. This is going to be my very first support. Then I'll show you how I analyze these charts where I think it's going to go. So I've got me a little support level right there at 180.89. What I don't want to see is for it to pull back down to this 178. 78 that I have here, my red line support level. And I got that if we pull back up to the to the daily. You see where I got that? That was at this peak right here. I don't want to see it going any lower than that. If it does and fails, it could drop down here to 172.61. And maybe I'll put another trend line while I'm looking at it. I'll put another red line resistance right here at 175.98. I don't think we're going to have all the time to do all the stocks I want to do, but at least I'm getting you on a good start with this trade right here. This was very bullish, and I'm going to tell you how I traded this stock today. We had that IM, ISM report come out right around after the market was open. I felt good coming into the market, and we did have a pretty good little bump first thing this morning. And I'm going to pull up in one minute and show you what I'm talking about. If I get this thing stopped. Okay, right out of the morning, right out of the gate. We started, I had this little channel that I was looking at. And we had an ascending pattern that started previous of the market. And then she pulled back it open. And she started taking off pretty good. But I was telling the room, we better settle down and wait a little bit and see what this report says. So I was very patient. And all of a sudden, we had this big knife. And I then I made a confirmation. I said, people are asking me, when's the confirmation to get back into the trade? And I said, well, we're going to have, and this is before it happened. I said, we're going to have a bump. Then once we have a little bump, it's going to pull back again. We're going to create a double bottom. And then if we create that double bottom, we're going to have a breakout if it starts to move on up. And look what happened. I mean, we, 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 had, we, we got in here first thing in the morning. Patiently, and almost every ticker turned out like this today. All the big tickers. They pulled back, and then it bounced up, and it pulled back and created a double bottom. And then we got confirmation. We saw the tape. We saw the blocks coming in. 
and we just decided to go ahead and jump on in the trade. Well, you see, we had that same issue right in here um, previous of the day, which I created a support level right in here on that pullback. Well, look what happened. We run up here and the thing pulled right back to that support level that we had right here and stopped right there. So every chart tells a story. And if you start reading these stories, you will become a very successful trader. And then she went ahead and ran on up and it's just a beautiful run today. Hit the resistance that we had on that yearly chart that I showed you earlier. If you remember what me pulling that line up, we run into that and she went ahead and pulled on back down and created a new support. And I went ahead and drew that line in because that's where we pulled back to. In case it decided to pull on back again, there I am. I'm ready for it. And let me. So she went ahead and she started running the rest of the day. And she just kept going. It was very bullish. And then we created a little channel right here of weakness. We started, we got that high and then we got a little higher low and then we got a little lower, lower high right here. And so more or less we closed at the end of the day with a pop. And she popped on up to that resistance level. So what I'm going to say tomorrow when we come in, we're going to see a pullback to probably 180.18, 180.15 at the most. That's where I'd like to see this hold and stay in this channel. If not, it's going to sh show a sign of weakness. And there's another little trend right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw this trend line as I see it right now because I don't want to leave that out. See how it kind of lines up here? We're going to draw another trend line right there. So our our first supports is going to be this here at 180.89. Then we're going to have a little channel of support right in here between 180.15 and 180.33. And then we have the 179.50 for them. And then if it goes below this, I would just go ahead and wait for it to pull back more. But this is going to be a hard support, a strong buy if it starts to hit this and bounce on up. But like I said, every chart tells a story. And with the help of Trend Spider, you can you can go ahead and draw these charts out and every trader trades it different. And there's so many tools with this platform that you could use about anything you want. And Jake, there you go for NVDA. Very good. That is beautiful. That was a massive move today. I can believe <laughs> how much that moved. Oh, so. they all moved very well. Baba. I mean, Baba, we had Boeing, we had, uh, we watched the spy CRWD. I mean, it was just a beautiful day. If you're just patient at the first, the bell and waited for that report. And it's kind of like being in the now you got to know what's going on, you know? Yep. Yep. Exactly. So no, that's, uh, that's awesome. Are there any other ones you want to go over? Well, we can go over, um, let's go over BA. I should have it charted up already. We'll see. So you go into the left-hand corner up here and you type in your ticker and you got Boeing. Now this Boeing was, is one that Vegas and I watch just religiously every day. We can play the pullbacks and we can play the bounces on up. And we usually rely on the news. We know that um, today, I think what really helped the market too was we got a tweet from Trump saying that China is going to come in and work on the tariff bill next week. And that, I mean, we've heard it in and out, in and out, in and out, but that was a little catalyst for the market today. Plus, we had more than a, a thousand point sell off, too. So I come into the market today real bullish at the point. So let's pull up the, um, let's go back to, like I said, the daily. Let's look at the yearly chart. We, you know, the, the thing had a pop all the way up here when it had that good news about that one plane that's coming out, and it ran all the way up to 446. And then she started, and then we had the uh, tragic news right after that happened of the plane crashes. So the thing's been consolidating up and down until it finally hit a bottom right here, right around the 319.97 area. And I'm going to draw a trend line right there for support. We're not going to see that again, probably. We'll put that in there for right now. And so we've we've had this little channel that we've been working on. We've had a pretty good run all the way up from it. And it had a high. We called it high. I called a high of 390. And we hit 390.75. So that was a pretty good call from down here at the bottom. 
and it consolidated. So we're going to pull up now. We're going to pull up the. Uh, let's draw a couple more trend lines in here. We're going to look for another place of consolidation. I try to look for a yearly pivot point. I can look at a chart on a year daily in tech, 10 seconds. I can tell you if I like the stock or not. If I'll turn it, I can tell you if we're at a support level or if we're at a pivot point level or if we're at a resistance. Right now, I would say we're kind of hovering right in here, right at a, at a pivot point area. And that's because of this previous high we had right here. I can divide that up, and that's about where she closed here at 371. Anything above it, you start showing your resistances. Anything below that, you start showing your supports. That 320 being a low, 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 low support. So I'm going to draw another trend line right here where the base of that candle is. I'll go up here to horizontal where it says draw, and I'll hit that baby right there. I see it kind of lined up right in here, too. I'll go off the base of the candle, and I'll draw that trend line in there. And that's just a reminder that, and I'm going to go ahead and draw this red line. Well, I'm not going to change that for now. And I'm going to look for another area of support. I'll go up here to drawing. I'll hit the horizontal. And there's a couple of other thank tools in here I'll show you about in a second on this chart here. And I'm finding a support level. I've probably looked over a half a million charts every bit of half a million in the 15 years that I've, I've done this, an average of about 60 a day. You can do the math and tell me a little later. We've got another horizontal line I see right here that I'm going to look for support area. I see this breakdown in here, so I'm just going to kind of draw it across. I see it's kind of matching up in there. So we'll draw us a little support right here at right there at 364.53. Then I'm going to start looking for resistances. we got a resistance right in here. So I'll go up to draw, hit that, and I'll draw me some resistance levels. And there's one right there. I'm kind of lining them up with these candles. Every candle tells a story. So I would deeply consider learning candles and learning patterns. And then I'm going to go for another resistance right up in here. And the patterns I look for are pennant flags, ascending triangles, and descending triangles for weakness. And then we've got, and I use black crows, three white soldiers, just all kinds of stuff you can use. And then I'm going to draw another resistance right here. See where the top of that base of that candle is? And there's been a lot of good stuff coming out with Boeing here lately. They know that they've got some issues and they're working on them and trying to build confidence back up in their in their 737. So here we got to put another one right here. And then we're going to be done with these resistance levels. And we see that we're kind of bullish and we had a pullback. So we can get back up here back up to the 386 again. We're going to pull this up now to a four hour. We're going to look at the four hour. I'm pretty much satisfied with my trend lines. I see one right in here maybe we could draw. So I'm going to go in here. I'm fine tuning it as I go every chart and all these moving averages change. All these moving averages change. You know, if I go back to the daily during different time frames, and I only use three time frames, so I won't get so confused. And then I trade off that off them time frames, and if they come to my support levels, then I'm satisfied. But I'm gonna go back to this daily and show you exactly what I mean by the by the um, EMAs. Right now we're following the nine EMA all the way up, and then she broke out and failed here in the last three days, pulled back and almost hit that 200. But we're crossing in that 34. But for right now, we're bullish because we got the nine on top. We are curving down. And then the 30 has crossed over the 200. So that's a bullish sign to me. You see what happened over here? We had the nine cross down over the 34 and it, and it got weak. And the stock started disrespecting that nine. But then all of a sudden, that nine started curling up. 
and it started gaining respect for that 9 EMA. So that's kind of like right in here. You see how much respect it gave that 9 all the way up. Then that thing started jumping down, and we had the big knife. And then, you know, you can play puts when the thing's down below that, or you can play the, the calls when it starts to cross over. And they usually call that a golden cross. So let's go down to the daily one minute. We're going to look for places that we want to get into this trade. Well, let's look at the hour. I've got a little trend line that I've drawn up in here that I think that's going to be a support level. And I've got that draw that line by going in here and hitting um, trend line. This trend line will exceed on out because I could draw this and I could just let me hit it first trend line like that and then it just goes wherever you want it to and then you stop it and it goes all the way out I don't want to erase that right now you remove this ray drawing and I'm going to do it with the segment line the segment line has a spot right here and you can just draw it on up and draw your little pattern right here and I'm drawing it off this base right here see watch what happens when I go up here and hit this other support level right in here. And I'll just keep on going. We had the base right there, pulled back and hit that trend line, bounced up, pulled back and hit that here, bounced up, pulled back and hit it here and failed. Once it failed there, that's time to exit the trade because you're showing a sign of weakness. But that would be a support line. If I was in the trade and it, and it pulled down and hit that I would wait a few seconds if it started to knife from there I'd go ahead and cut my loss or cut my gains especially if I got in down here but I'm always looking for patterns and then we'll go up in here and then this other one this would extend on out so I could probably go in here draw that line right there and it would can well come on baby She's being very stubborn with me. Bam. And that'll keep on extending out if that's what I wanted to do with it. So let's go up to the one minute. We'll pull up the one minute now. And I'm still using my moving averages. You notice they change. So on a day trade, if I was in here day trading this stock, and it failed this pattern right here. I'd wait for it to go back to that other support level that I drawn earlier, and look what happened. Pulled right back and hit it, and then it bounced on up. The nine disrespected it, pulled down below the thirty-four, and run into the two hundred. Kind of puzzled right there, and then you, you know, you're always going. You got three white soldiers right here, then after or three black crows, and all of a sudden. You had three white soldiers come in and it just took on off and created new resistances. So there's just different ways of, of drawing these trend lines and looking for patterns. And there you are for Boeing. I think Boeing, what Boeing's going to do by looking at this chart right now, this is going to be your low support, this trend line. That's going to be a strong buy. Hopefully it holds that. It can pull back to your previous high here at 71 33, 371.73, I mean. And then you have another little support level right here at 371.46. Then I'm going to draw another trend line right in here for another support level. It does get kind of muddy, but once you do it for a little bit, you'll understand how that, how that happens and how they work. And I can use the same exact trend lines year after year after year. Until it gets where you can't hardly see nothing, then you got to erase and start all fresh again. But I've demonstrated in the chat room that, you know, I'm saying these are my 2018 trend lines, and look at it. It run right to it and stopped there. So history always repeats itself. And then, so right now, I think this stock can pull back to this first support area at 371.73. Then we got another one right here, and that is right at 371.47 where we had that other peak and then we had the third one right down here right here at at 371 period and then you have your low support 
which it consolidated right down here, would be probably a strong buy if it pulled back to 370. Anything below that, you know, it's a real sign of weakness because it would be going below that trend line. But you could be that's the way you could be playing the puts on the pullback. And that's Boeing. Jake? Beautiful. Uh, so I, I will take over and share a couple examples of horizontal levels on like SPY and um, uh, IWM. And uh, we'll take any questions after that and call it a day. Yeah, that, that SPY, that's a, that's a catalyst for when I'm looking at stocks in these major um, indexes. I like to look at that SPY and, and the Dow and find out which direction it's moving. You know, if it keeps losing power, it, it's time for the puts. But when that thing starts to come back strong, that's when you want to start getting into the trades like we did today when the Dow was down, 30, down 300 and some points. Yep. Can you see my screen? Yep. All righty. So I uh, just wanted to go over kind of the origin of some of these areas that start as a horizontal level, because it's kind of like the, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg. And what I mean by that is if we remove this, especially the support, what is making the price find support at this level, at this level? And the, you know, these, these longer term areas and even moving averages create these types of pivot areas. So for example, when we started to break down, I personally will use the SMA 20 on the daily and then the EMA 50 on the daily. And you can see this area acted as nice support for quite a bit in the, over the last you know, week and a half or so. <clears throat> and from there, you can see that the price started to break down through the EMA 50, which is this blue line. And it's like, all right, well, what made the price stop right here? Well, one, the price stopped right here near this area, at least, because this was a previous area of support. But what created this previous area of support? You sometimes need to go to a higher time frame. So what we have the ability to do on TrendSpider is overlay a longer term time frame on a single um, you know, time frame chart. So the daily chart, but we can put the weekly SMA and EMA 50 on this. So once the price broke through the daily, I want to see how the price reacts with the weekly. So I turn on the SMA 20 weekly and I turn on the EMA 50 weekly and you can see how the price then started to support these areas perfectly. And now we bounced off the EMA 50 from the weekly chart almost perfectly. And you can see when we did find support back in August, this was the area that the price found support at. So it's, it's giving you the ability to consolidate your chart without having to look at multiple different areas uh, or different screens, meaning splitting your screen up where you have to go to, you know, a second chart and then you have to look at the weekly and then you have to look at the EMA SMA and the EMA 50 here, you can see how the weekly candle is interacting, but you can't necessarily see how the day-to-day -day, um, action is interacting without the MTFA. And this is something that's very unique to TrendSpider and pretty cool to use on a daily basis, especially when we have these big sell-offs and it's like, all right, where are we going to find support? And generally it's at these longer term areas and you can see that on the shorter term chart. Um, so if we go to IWM, this is another example here, and um, this is same type of thing, right? We've got this area of support, the horizontal uh, green area, almost perfectly touched, but it's like, how, what created this area of support below? And so if we turn on the weekly Bollinger Bands, you'll see here that the price has respected this area perfectly over the last you know month or so and so what you can see here is the price today touched almost this area perfectly below and so if i remove this alert you can see we did not actually touch this lower band so let's say that you had an alert for right at this 144.93 below or 144.85 you would have not gotten the alert triggered if you just had this precise area. But what you can do with our alerts is you can actually put an alert on this lower band and give yourself some margin of error. 
So in this case, I go to create alert and you can create the sensitivity around this line and you can see how essentially this wick is now within this area of the alert zone. So I can go to touch and that means anytime the price action touches this purple area, I'll be alerted. Now the thing is you have to make sure that you change your confirmation candle here because if we were waiting for the daily candle to close, you would have never gotten the alert until this afternoon. If you would have had it alert you on the 15 minute candle, you would have been alerted right whenever the 15 minute candle closed in this purple area and you would have been able to maybe make an intraday scalp or something like that. So then you create the alert and you can see how well the price action has respected this area multiple times in the past. So anytime that you know there's been a hardcore sell-off, it's been right to this area of the lower band and you can see how well the daily price action respects that area. So based on this, you can see that you know anytime that the price has formed a uh, wick around this area, there's been a pretty hard move to the upside. So we'll just have to see if that continues um, or we get a very short term move to the upside and then continue down. We'll just have to see what happens. So um, one other example of this is like Amazon. So today, you know, you're looking at Amazon, you're like, where, why did we find support here? If you look at the uh, weekly Bollinger Band, the lower band here, you can see that we almost touched it perfectly before bouncing to the upside. And then you've got this really nice hammer that's forming here um, or trying to form on the, uh, on the daily chart. So um, one thing that you can do, and I'm not sure why this isn't working. I mean, I guess it's just not catching it. But generally, you know, anytime a hammer forms, you're able to capture that on the chart. And you can even create alerts next time it, uh, next, uh, time it happens. And uh, so it's very interesting to be able to uh, kind of see this and say, all right, well, you know, I'm getting close to this area. It didn't touch exactly there. But you can see a lot of the time when there's a candle right around this area, you did have a decent move up. That's not always going to be the case. You can always break right through this area and uh, continue down. Notice here you had a pretty strong candle here and you continue down through the lower band. So uh, it's, it's something that, you know, is, uh, is something to always use with many other indicators as well. Uh, it's interesting though to see, we also found support right at this previous area. And Jim, I'm sure this is an area you would have found uh, as support. You could probably even oh, yeah. right there. Yep. It go runs all the way across the page here. Yep. Yep. So uh, it's definitely an area that's acted as uh, both resistance and then support. And now it's acting as support again here. Uh, you can do the same thing with trend lines. So if you find, notice how we didn't actually close at this line, you can always go to the uh, alert and create that sensitivity around it. So you can be alerted anytime it gets around this area rather than that exact point. So that is, uh, you know, that's how you can utilize horizontal levels and you can kind of see where these horizontal levers, uh, levels are coming from. They generally are from some type of longer term indicator or moving average. And it's really interesting to see how the price respects these areas um, using TrendSpider to kind of observe these general um, longer term areas with shorter term price action. Um, and uh, let's see if we have any. Uh, we have OKTA, somebody mentioned. We can check that out real quick. And this will be an example that we'll just use the trend lines for. So um, we have a feature that we mentioned before, and this is a cool example, right? We found support right at this area, hard bounce to the upside. So you could even create an alert here, and then you could find, uh, you know, anytime the price got anywhere within this area tomorrow, if it did continue up, you would be alerted. So that is how you can utilize that. I do want to focus on the trend lines a little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna, that, that sensitivity uh, thing you have, that is really a great thing. Sometimes they don't always pull right back to that support level. Yep. And then when it hits that, that outer barrier of that trend line, 
that could be a possibility of a good trade that you would have missed if you just were just going off the trend line itself. So that is a great feature. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it comes in handy a lot, especially when you don't have time to look at the chart constantly and you need, you know, the, char, uh, the platform to do a little of the watching for you. Um, so what I just did on the daily chart here was actually on the trends feature. So what you can do here is when you turn on trend lines, the system will automatically find lines for you based on um, a setting set that you're using. So in this case, I'm using enhanced. I'm using body to body trend lines and I'm having the system ignore gaps in price. If I change this, let's say to um, wick to wick, we'll keep it enhanced, but we'll have the system then connect the wicks and I apply this, you'll see how the system's then finding completely different lines because we're now connecting the wicks rather than the bodies. So it's something that's really useful and it's, it's not there to replace your technical analysis, it's there to complement what you're doing because everybody's gonna have a different way that they're viewing the chart. So for example, um, another way that you can view this is simply by going to um, original, apply, and even, even here, you're getting different uh, lines. And you can see everyone's gonna have a different view here. Some people may draw the trend line like this, and that may be your view. Some people may draw the chart like this, And that may be your view, the two areas of resistance above, and then you have your weekly EMA as support below. So there's a lot of different ways that these trend lines can help. They're not going to just tell you exactly what's going on. They're going to complement what you're already thinking about. So it's really there to give you a second set of eyes and almost be like a spell check for you. Um, this is an example that I did um, a couple weeks ago. Somebody asked about this stock. And it was an area that I, I really, you know, had been drawing trend lines for, you know, just for a while by myself. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to kind of turn on the trends feature. And all I was really looking at was this. I was looking at this kind of upward sloping uh, ascending wedge, if you will. And what you could see is I wasn't really looking at the longer term. And when I turned on the trend lines here on the weekly chart, I could see that we are actually getting close to this longer term resistance as well. And so you can see how it's kind of giving me an idea of, oh, wow, we're not only in this ascending wedge, but we're also at previous resistance that has occurred multiple times. You've got it here. You've got it here. And then again, you we pretty much had resistance once again here and the price is starting to break down. So, so it's a way to complement what you're doing by hand and not replace it. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that, show you guys how you can utilize the platform and uh, really appreciate um, everybody jumping on and checking it out. If anybody wants to see a, a stock, we'll, uh, we'll share a couple more, but um, it is starting to get close to that uh, hour uh, time frame, and uh, we will be signing off here soon. So if nobody has any questions, we'll quickly go to the rest of the presentation here and we'll be able to um, show you guys a little bit about what's to come. We do have market scanning. We have watch list alerts coming, the ability to look for cup and handles, uh, specific, you know, symmetrical wedges, following wedges, and uh, as well as you know, expanding the price alerts. So making them more dynamic than they already are. Into the second half of, uh, into the first and second half of 2020, we're going to be working on data. So integrating new data feeds, working on even more complex um, recognition, such as head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, that type of thing. And uh, even doing the ability to integrate your own brokerage data so you can actually make trades through these alerts that you're getting. So it's uh, definitely something that's, uh, you know, a work in progress, but we're very excited to um, show you guys what we have so far. And it's something that, you know, I utilize every day. I've been a trader for about 15 years, and it's something that really just makes the whole process more efficient. A big thank you again to uh, Jim. And uh, sorry, Vegas couldn't make it on this one. We'll do another one with Vegas soon. If you guys want to take advantage of the free trial, you can start um, a trial. And if you like uh, what you see and what you can utilize on the platform, 
you can use I love 20 P for 20% off up to 12 months and make sure to check out. I love stocks.com and you guys can get all the information from Vegas and Jim um, by uh, just asking them in the chat. If you have any questions, thank you so much, Jim, for joining. Well, you're very welcome. And I do appreciate being on here and, and thank you. Hey, you're very welcome. And I uh, look forward yep. to doing this again sometime soon. And thank you everyone for joining. And uh, we, uh, We'll see what Friday has to come, but it looks like it could be an interesting day to the upside if that gap above fills. Yeah, and follow us on ilovestocks.com. Ring that bell on our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter too and StockTwits. And and just um, we just love trading. We do it every day. I've done it every day for 15 years, and I really enjoy it. And I love teaching. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys again for joining and uh, make sure to check them out on Twitter and we will definitely um, talk to you guys soon. And uh, we do have another webinar this Sunday, so make sure to check that out if you want to check out more about the platform and what the charts look like into the week ahead. Thanks yeah, for everyone. And uh, sorry, last words, Jim? Yeah, I want to give kudos to Miss Vegas. She's a very good, um, she, she knows how to spot trends and she's teaching the room how to trade options and we're just i just enjoy trading with her so i really want to give kudos out to her awesome and we'll have her on uh definitely um as well so um thanks everyone again for joining and we'll talk to everyone soon and have a great rest of your week